Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Church is a great place. Today is the end of the series of online morning prayer services in my local church, and we have had an amazing time these past four weeks. Whoever said that online church is boring? Huh. Not us, and the hour passes by so quickly each morning. The focus for this last day is praying about the local church, and we are going to modify that among ourselves in this space. I suggest we look at what a Christian church looks like and what it offers. Now, let me be fair. We're not going to criticize anyone's church, but we shall use the scriptures to help us to understand church a little more. Now, let us start at the beginning and answer the question of why church? You would be surprised, but the main purpose for church is to create a context where folks can meet regularly and be able to encourage one another, especially as we keep focus on the return of Jesus. Hebrews 10 and verse 25. That is pretty simple, isn't it? It is challenging being a Christian because there is so much about being a Christian that you need to find a place where other people can encourage you teach you, support you. So when church first came into existence several weeks after Jesus had gone back to heaven, the Christians in those early days, they used to meet frequently, sometimes every day, to learn about the apostles' doctrines, to pray, to do communion and to fellowship, and to get along with each other. Acts 2 and verse 42. Well, they also found out that by meeting regularly, their numbers were growing. Their numbers grew so much that they started having some problems and some people had to migrate to other cities and they started churches there too. And that just multiplied. How often should we go to church? Now, I know for some people that's a sticky issue. Now, I have to commend some churches on being creative and they build programs based on what the leaders think the members of the church need. Most churches have a regular weekly meeting, usually on a Sunday. That is the whole community of church meeting and one of the big pieces of that meeting is singing music, Psalm 100 verse 4. A main feature of that meeting is something that dates back to the birth of the church over 2,000 years ago, and that is preaching. Preaching is probably the biggest assignment because this can be the time that the church preaches so that some other people can become Christians. But generally, that activity is meant to encourage the members in how they should live their Christian life. At our church this Sunday, the emphasis will be on faith, and I'm excited to, to be there and to learn more about faith. Another feature of church is a prayer service. This is the time when the members of the church meet to pray for specific needs and issues, including praying for healing for members who might be sick. You might find this interesting, but the Bible teaches that the church should pray for the country they live in and for those who form the government. 1 Timothy 2 verses 1 to 6. The prayer service is usually on a weekday and it has proven to be an important time when church folks get together. And many churches, they keep a track of the prayers that God answers. Still another exciting featured activity of a local church is what is called Bible study. This is very important and some churches can boast of great attendance and how much the members benefit from it. Bible study is where Bible teachers are able to teach on sections of the Bible or certain topics. Why should they? You see, the Bible is like a collection of books, but overall, it is useful teaching that people need to learn how to live a good and successful Christian life. It is really that book that speaks to almost 
everything in the life of a Christian. And by engaging in this activity, surprisingly, people get stronger and stronger in their faith. 2 Timothy 4, verses 16 and 17. Now we get down to some specifics. Many churches are strong on teaching the younger ones, and so you will find that there are programs for kids, for teens, for young adults. In some places, it is called Sunday school, and for some others, they call it children's church. Why is this important? Regardless of the name they use, it has been proven that it is important to teach children about the Bible and they learn better in a context of their peers. In ancient Israel, there was a strong emphasis on teaching the Word of God to children, especially the Ten Commandments, Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 to 9. Let us change gear and look at the way church members ought to live. Jesus stressed something of great importance, love. Listen to what Jesus said. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. John 13 and verse 34. Notice that Jesus did not just command them to love, but he pointed to a model. He used himself and the way he loved the disciples as a model of how they should love each other. I love to see how people in our church practice love one for another. It is really, really cool. Another thing is that the church has a responsibility to take care of some special folks, folks such as those who are poor, the elderly, widows, those who might be hungry or homeless, or those who cannot come to church. In the early days, when the idea of church just started, the members used to sell personal possessions and donate the money to church leaders to help others who were less fortunate. Acts 2 and verse 45. Some churches organize this aspect of church life so that such things are distributed fairly. It is so important when the church, for example, looks out for those of their members who are sick, those who are, are laid aside and they cannot come to church because of their age. Those people get to experience church in a different way. The last practice within local churches that I want to share with you is to prepare people to share the gospel with others so that other people who do not come to church can hear about Jesus and become Christians too. The church has some leaders who specialize in such teaching and preparation, and they engage members of the church so that they can reach people in different settings and to tell them about Jesus. I've just shared with you some of the fundamental features of a local church. You might find some churches have other things, but these are the core features of your local church. You will agree that there is no perfect church, but you can do like what our friends from my church did early this morning. Pray for your church. Pray for your church leaders. Pray for the various features of church life that they will be effective and that the church will grow as people grow stronger and more people begin to come to be a part of your local church.